Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got a fun flip flap fun fold card featuring the sweet gingerbread bundle. This is a card style that we did last week, no, the week before for coffee and a mystery card. It kind of flips and flaps and has lots of fun pages where you can decorate, put your personalized messages, maybe even some photographs. All right, let's get started. We're going to start with some garden green cardstock. This one is five and a half by 10 and this one is seven by three. We're going to get our simply scored tool and score these pieces. The measurements for the five and a half by 10 piece is going to be very familiar to you. We're going to score at four and a quarter and eight and a half. And then the three by seven Piece, we're going to score in half at three and a half. And that is the base of our card. Let's grab a bone folder and work these score lines. So our little card is going to fold on the right hand side. I know that feels a little unusual, but you want that one to fold on the right. And then this larger card is going to fold in from both sides. So from our right side, the small panel will fold in. From our left side, the large panel will fold in. And that, when we adhere this little card, becomes our card base. All right, before we adhere the two pieces and the base together, let's go ahead and adhere our designer series paper. So I have two pieces that are four by five and a quarter, and we're gonna put one of these pieces on the front of the card and one inside of the card. I'm just going to use some liquid glue for this. You could use dry adhesive if you like. I'm just going to center them in the panels. So there's our front, a little glue. We're going to open up the card and place this one inside center. And there's our panel. Now, these are one and a quarter by five and a quarter. <clears throat> We're going to add a little adhesive and glue one of these pieces to the inside of this skinny little panel, centered, and one to the outside of the same panel. So just close the card up and glue it down. I love this card for showing off the awesome coordination and using all the beautiful patterns from designer series paper packs from Stampin' Up. Today we're using the um, brand new sweetest Christmas designer series paper pack. Now the next thing we're going to do is take this little card and it opens on the right hand side. So keep that in mind, especially if you've got a directional paper, because once you glue this one on, if you glue it on with the fold on the left side and you have to turn it up end over end, a directional pattern will be upside down. If it's not directional, There'd be no harm, but if it's directional, really be careful. Be sure that that fold is in your right hand. Now for this kind of card, you're gonna adhere the little card to the big card so that you have a flip and a flap, and it's gonna kind of layer closed. One card, one card, like this. So I found that the best way to get this all lined up nicely is to put the card, the small card, where you want it to be from the front view. When you've got that, then open it so that the small card is over the front panel. Add your adhesive about an inch wide, but not all the way to the fold, not too deep into the card, otherwise you'll glue your card closed. Close the card and then burnish. Now what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have enough room here for this card to close without getting hung up on the fold. And that happens because the first fold is set back a little bit from the second fold. So you can see the little card, the fold on the little card extends just a little bit past the fold on the big card. And that's the best way to get that so everything closes nicely. All right, now I'm gonna take some ribbon here. And on my live video, I said that I'd demonstrate it, putting it around the um, designer series paper instead of wrapping the whole 
card and they completely forgot to do it. So I'm very sorry. Maybe I'll just demonstrate that, but we're gonna wrap the whole card with the ribbon and tie a bow. If you're making a lot of these cards, you might want to adhere the end of your ribbon, a strip about six inches long to the back of your designer series paper, and then tuck it so that it just runs a straight line. And once you've got the ribbon, then you can slide another piece through and tie. It will save about four inches of ribbon if you just adhere these ends to the back of your designer series paper. So keep that in mind if you're gonna mass produce this card. If you're gonna make more than just a you know one or two, you might wanna save that because you'll save a lot of ribbon if you do a two-piece bow instead of completely wrapping the card. I'm gonna tie my bow and tie it up nice and high so that we can have that little cloud from the chimney. I'm using the Real Red and Garden Green Ribbon Combo Pack. It's 3 8 inch, and it's kind of um, a linen texture, and it's got mm, kind of a matte finish with a little satiny stitch on the edge. There's a little bit of sheen on the edges of this ribbon. Soft, ties a beautiful bow, and very true to Stampin' Up! Real Red and Garden Green, perfect for the holidays, or use the green one for your Christmas cards and use the red one for your Valentine's projects if you don't have a lot of both to make the combo pack will cover both holidays. All right, there's our gorgeous bow. And now let's take a look at our inside panels. So for the inside panels, you've got basic white, and they are two and three quarters by three and a quarter. You have one, two, three panels that are that size. So one, two, three. And then this panel is just a little bit different. This one is two and three quarters by three and one eighth. The measurements will be on the project sheet. Don't scramble to write them down. We do have a printable resource for you with all these measurements. Now what I did with these before the video was I took and added just a little touch of pool party ink and it gives almost um, the, the idea of sky. And so we're gonna do that with our one panel here, do all three, but for the magic of television, I'm gonna just demonstrate this one and these are already done. We're using a blending brush and pool party ink. And we're just gonna tap pick up the ink. I love to use the corners of my ink pad to pick up ink because when you're inking a stamp, you go straight for the center of the pad. And so that leaves the corners and the edges with a little bit more ink than the center of the pad. And so it's a good way to pick up ink on a brush instead of going straight to the center with your brushes too. Use those edges. And then just use big sweeping circles to layer the ink um, across the top and about three quarters down the side making kind of an arc across the top. It's a really subtle detail but it helps to put your gingerbread house and trees and fence and everything in an environment. It gives you kind of a sky background and you can layer it up as bold as you want. Once the ink's on the paper though you can't take it off so take your time Keep going back to the pad and layering more ink until you get the effect that you are looking for. There we go, just kind of a soft sky look. Make sure we clean up the brush real good. And there it is. So we've got our three, two and three quarter by three and a quarter and our one, two and three quarter by three and one eighth. We're gonna Set these aside for just a minute and bring in our ink pads and stamp and pierce mat. We'll do some stamping. All right, our ink pads are crumb cake, soft suede, daffodil delight, real red, garden green, and I've brought pool party back here. Got a scrap of basic white cardstock, and we are going to stamp one of everything and die cut it so that you can see, but ahead of time. For the magic of television, I've done a couple of the elements that repeat on our project. This cutout house is the house for inside, or for outside, 
And let's bring our sample in here. We also need the cloud and sending love. So let's start there. I've got my little cloud image and we're going to stamp in pool party and then give it a chance to dry. Oh, not perfect. Let me stamp it again. I missed a little, a little spot and that's going to show. There we go. Now give it a chance to dry before we stamp over it with the words. We got the little heart that we're going to bump up. We can stamp that with real red. We're going to need some little gumdrops here. And we're, when we're doing these gumdrops, we want to figure out how many of each color we need and then stamp them from lightest to darkest, coolest to warmest. So we need a couple of pool party. So we'll start with pool party, stamp those first. Then we'll wipe off of our off our stamp. We need some that are Daffodil Delight. We'll stamp some Daffodil Delight gumdrops. And then Real Red. So you see the progression. Lightest intensity, coolest color, moving to the darkest intensity and the warmest color. That'll keep your inks nice and clean and um, the colors very consistent. All right, now we've got inside we need a little a little tree i want to show you here what we did we did some of our trees directly on the panel so there's one stamp there and then we did some that we can cut out that'll give us some depth one tree's back further from the eye it's behind the fence one in front so we're going to go ahead and stamp one of these little panels with a tree that'll be behind the fence while we're stamping. So here's our little tree. Next we need our house on this panel. So this house is done exactly the same way as the one that we're doing here on the panel, only we die cut it. So we're gonna have a little house. We want it to be about an eighth or a quarter of an inch from the bottom, maybe three eighths of an inch from the left side. Here we go. And we're using crumb cake ink for the background and soft suede for the details. So we'll stamp over with the trim for the window and doors and with the little scroll details for below the roof. Isn't that cute? I love that part. We're going to fill in the door with real red. I love the two-step stamping. Just take your time, look through, line it up. It's relatively easy and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. All the details will come together just fine. So there's our little tree and house. We can set that aside that's the first page of our little flip flap card for the next page in the flip flap card let's grab the next three and a quarter inch piece and we're going to put from our home to yours we'll stamp that kind of upper right corner here in real red then we'll bring back that heart and stamp that underneath the rest of our details are going to go in front of our fence, so we'll stamp and die cut those. Next page, this is one of those three and a quarter inch pieces. And we're going to add a little tree so that it'll be behind the fence. So let's get our tree stamp and garden green. We'll put that a little high of the bottom right corner here. Now the three and one eighth inch panel, it's just a little bit shorter than the other three. That's the last page of our flip flap. And we're gonna add, have a sweet Christmas and the heart all with real red ink. <clears throat> and now I think our cloud from the front is going to be dry enough so we can go back to our scrap with the ones that we're going to die cut and back to the front of our project here we're going to add sending love over the top 
There it is, sending love. Now, we're gonna do a little lollipop here, and I've already done one ahead, but we need two. So let's go ahead and stamp our lollipop. We're gonna do the lollipop very much like we did the gumdrops. We're gonna go crumb cake for the stick. So we'll do the first image in crumb cake. That's a, little, a less intense, more neutral color ink. And then we're gonna do one in red, real red for the candy part. And what I like to do is die cut them both and then I make a Franken pop where I cut the red and glue it on to the crumb cake. And that way I get my two tone lollipop without having to use two colors ink on one stamp. You can use markers and just color your stamp so that you use a crumb cake marker and do the stem stick. And then you use a real red marker, do the candy and then huff and stamp but I'm too slow at that and I like to talk too much so then my stamp dries so I'm better at the Franken pop so that's what we're gonna do all right I think we got all of our pieces here um, oh we need a roof for our house the inside house so let's get that guy on there here's the roof for the inside for this little house and we're gonna stamp that with soft suede on our scrap to die cut all right let's clear away the ink pads and get the stamp and cut and emboss machine. We're gonna cut out these pieces. Okay, all the stamps that we're using are from the Sweet Gingerbread stamp set. Now we're gonna cut these pieces out using the Gingerbread House stamps, or the Gingerbread House dies. You can bundle these two products together and save 10%. They're new in the holiday catalog. What I love so much about the Gingerbread House dies is that Stampin' Up! just knew that to decorate our gingerbreads, we were gonna need lots of lollipops, and lots of trees, and lots of gumdrops. So the set comes with multiple dies for several of the images. So we've got our little lollipop here. There's two lollipop dies in the set. So we'll be able to make our Franken lollipop with just one pass because we can cut out both the crumb cake and the real red lollipop at the same time. There's three gumdrops, there's two trees, and so I just think that that's really brilliant that Stampin' Up! Um, thought about how we would use this die set and gave us multiples accordingly. I'm going to just line all these up. We'll get everything you see here that we need all in one pass which is awesome i think that's winning because look at the three little gumdrop dies i love these guys all right we got everybody all set up top plate goes on let's give it a crank and here are the rest of our little bits besides the stamped bits that we did we're gonna now make the fence and the snow drift. So let me show you. I'm gonna reset our machine over here. I've got some soft suede cardstock. It's got the adhesive sheets on the back. This product is amazing. I'm gonna pop the little fence on that piece. And then we have a scrap that is three and a quarter long. It doesn't matter how wide it is. This is going to be for our snow drift. This little squiggly die is also included in the gingerbread house dies. And that is our snow drift. All right, let's go ahead and give those a crank. We'll pass those through. Look at how beautiful that fence is. I know you're thinking, oh, I got to weed out all those little bits. No, you don't. I'll show you. Let me get the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine out of here and I'll show you the amazing adhesive sheets in action. All right, so for this project, you're gonna need a fence and a half. And I just happen to have a half a fence from the last card. What we're gonna do is we're going to put our fence across the page two and page three, or page one and page two here. So to get this fence ready to use, all you have to do is flick 
against the side of your thumb. You notice I didn't dig against it with my fingernail. I didn't go get a take your pick tool. All, all I did was flick and I'm going to peel the release and just roll it away from the die cut. See how I'm rolling it backwards from the cardstock? And there's all those little bits that you were wondering how unfun was it going to be to pick all of those out. They just come right out. Now we can line up our fence. It's sticky right against the house and then trim off the excess. I do love this little fence. It's adorable. We'll just cut off the extra. And then from the other side here, we'll pick up where we left off and cut off the extra. That's the first page. And then on the second page, from our home to yours, we're going to run the fence starting from a full post all the way across the bottom. Oh, there's one little piece we have to push out. And it should go from full post to full post. That three and a quarter measurement is just about right for that. Cut off the excess from each side. And now we can glue these inside our card. So we've got our gingerbread house and our little fence. Let's get the roof on there. And then we're going to decorate just a little bit in front of the tree. We'll add a tree, another tree. So we have one in front of the fence, one behind the fence, which gives us some great depth. And we're also going to add a little gumdrop in front of our fence for a little extra pop of color and sweetness. So there's our page one. Page two, we'll put centered right in here. And we're building a whole scene, a whole yard scene. And we've got another, got another little tree and gumdrop. And we're gonna add those in front, add a little bit more color. And if you've got too much adhesive on the tree, use it on the gumdrop. Cute, aren't they? Okay, now we're gonna flip this closed and add our next panel. It's our little tree, but first, a little bit of our awesome fence. So we've got the second half of our fence here. We're gonna peel that the same way and weed it. Just tap those little guys into the trash. And we're gonna put part of the fence across the front of our card here and trim off the excess. We're going to decorate with a lollipop. So let's make our Franken pop here. Got the red and the crumb cake. We're going to trim off the red candy and then adhere it to the crumb cake stick. And we'll add that in front of our fence. Just so cute. More gumdrops. And you can mix these colors up however you choose. I got a little pool party one and Daffodil Delight. I like to bring all the different colors. And this will give you a place where you could write a little personal greeting or punch a small little photograph, add something here, write a little personalized note. Our last piece of garden green is three inches by three and three eighths. And that is going to go inside of our card to make the final page of our flip flap card. And will Matt have a sweet Christmas on garden green to give us our final page. Now let's go back to the beginning Let's do the front of our card. On the front of our card, bring our sample back in here. We've got our house. Here's the second one that's been die cut. I assembled already with the roof. I put it on with some dimensionals. And then I'm going to add a couple little dimensionals behind the house. One, two, three. 
leave this area where the chimney is free of dimensionals because the next thing we're gonna do is bring, oh, I forgot our little swoop. Where's our little landscape, our little um, hill? Here it is. We can't forget our snow drift that we cut with the fence. I love this little snow drift die. Can also be sand, so keep that in mind with this die set. And now our little house. And then sending love. It's gonna go past the top edge of the little card, so just a little liquid glue across the bottom scallops. Tuck that in under the chimney. Secure it down. Got a little half a dimensional here for the heart. We're gonna pop that up in that cloud. Sending love. Now some more of those awesome die cut embellishment bits. I'm gonna adhere these with a bit of liquid or a combination of liquid and dimensional glue so we can get some um, depth. I'll put liquid on the back of my tree. Pop that little guy in the background. Some liquid on my little yellow gumdrop. And again, that one kind of goes in the background. Then we'll get dimensionals and I'm gonna cut these a little bit smaller. We'll put a bit on our lollipop and a bit on our other gumdrop. Isn't that sweet and festive? We're gonna let the lollipop go right up to the house. The gumdrops overlap each other a little bit. Last touch, what every card needs is just a little bit of sparkle. We're gonna use these matte self-adhesive sequins. They're a gold color. They're from an awesome new embellishment pack that came out with the holiday catalog. They're called Adhesive Backed Seasonal Sequins, and it's four sheets. Got an iridescent red, a sparkly white matte, and an iridescent green, along with this matte gold and they just add a nice warm glow. I think it kind of repeats the nice warm glow that you see in the window. So I thought they were the perfect choice for this. I'm gonna use five, kind of like they're falling. Three down and two up here. Of course, you can use any of the colors from that collection and put them where you like, as many as you like. But there it is, there's our sending love flip flap fold card. If you've got any questions about the project, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaelvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.